Hello and welcome to our new video series on implementing responsive design. Um, here's our agenda. Uh, we're going to first talk about recognizing the need for responsive design. So talk about what is the difference between really responsive versus adaptive. Talk a little bit about what is mobile first design uh, and then give some, uh, a few examples of responsive design in the process that we'll take. And so and in the next video we'll get into the, the logistics and coding out and implementing what we call a media query into our CSS code. So uh, go ahead and pause this video. Uh, this is a one minute video that's going to introduce you to um, what is responsive design uh, and it'll give you some visuals uh, to kind of go along with what we're going to talk about uh, next here. All right, so hopefully that video gave you a little bit more context about what is responsive design, right? So our site responds to a variety of different devices as well as uh, the different screen widths. Uh, on this next slide here, I want to give some context on what is adaptive versus responsive. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but sometimes you, you will hear the term adaptive design. Uh, adaptive design implements several distinct layouts for multiple screen sizes uh, or based on particular devices. For example, you may have seen sites that have a mobile hyperlink at the bottom of their page. Uh, once you click uh, that mobile view, um, once you click on that mobile link, it will present you with a mobile view. Right? There are a number of sites that utilize this strategy, such as Best Buy, uh, Wikipedia, and many others. Let me just pause here and just show you uh, an example. So if we were to go to bestbuy.com, right, it takes us to the, the, the desktop site. But if we scroll all the way down here, uh, they have a typically they would have a link at the bottom. Let's see here. Let's click off the sign up here. And they have a link here that says mobile view. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, here it is mobile site and what you're going to see is that they're going to render the mobile site on our desktop view and so it's a separate code base so when you're doing an adaptive approach it's a sep separate code base that we're pulling from but this is essentially what you will see uh, that they've catered this view for a mobile device so it is possible to have both a an adaptive and a responsive design approach implemented uh, responsive design on the other hand will automatically adjust to the screens width uh, and it's only drawing from one code base. So if we go back to the Best Buy website, let's actually refresh again, get back to the desktop view, or well, actually let's press that button to say full site. And so that's adaptive, right? Where we can actually, it's pulling different code bases, but then responsive is coming from one code base. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna minimize the screen here. And you'll see that this site is also implementing a responsive design approach. Now, actually, I take that back. It's not responding. Uh, and the reason being is because this site, if it was responsive, uh, it would actually adjust so that you can see all the content. You would typically never see a scroll bar um, when you're doing responsive design, right? Um, the site should morph and change and alter to fit uh, the screen width. And that's not happening here in Best Buy site. So perfect example, this site is truly adaptive and where they have a mobile site that's pulling from a different code base, a desktop site, that's pulling from a code base. Um, but let's actually take a look at a site that's truly responsive. And so let's say Dunwoody. Or let's do another one here. Let's actually do Target and see if their site is responsive. So here, if we scroll down, right, this site is truly responsive. You'll never see the scroll bar, but the content is always going to basically, um, it's going to morph to fit the screen width. And that's uh, an example of responsive. So, and that's our job, that's our goal, is how do we actually get our, our content, the components of our page to be um, presentable at various screen widths uh, that the user uh, may render our site within. You may have heard of a term called the mobile first web design approach. Um, uh, and a mobile first web design approach prioritizes the design of the mobile view first. Uh, there are many benefits to focusing on mobile view first. One, it forces you to think about what is essential given the limited space you have on a mobile device. Two, it is easier to add additional components and box elements as the screen width expands. Uh, there are a number of benefits to a mobile first design approach, but most companies tend to think through both the desktop view and the mobile view prior to development. And wireframing is a good tool that would allow you to capture what's essential for a variety of views. On this slide, uh, you will see an example of the World, World, World Wild, Wildlife Fund website and the various layouts at various screen widths. 
the transition between the views represent what we call a breakpoint. Uh, a breakpoint is the point in which the design layout changes. Uh, we see a major change between 768 and 1024. The logo is centered and the navigation is condensed uh, to a hamburger menu. So let's talk a little bit more about how to set a breakpoint. But before we do that, let's let, let's take another view at the World um, Wildlife Fund page here. You can see the various layout changes. So here is another look at those various design changes at different screen widths. At the breakpoint of 768, we would trigger a layout change to occur. Uh, essentially, we are going to trigger new code to render uh, when. <clears throat> uh, let me actually make this bigger here. We're going to trigger new code to render. Uh, when the breakpoint of 768 is, is is reached. Here are just a few things that we want to consider during this process. Uh, the CSS style rules to change the order, the positioning, and uh, the various correct characteristics of the page elements. We're going to use, I'm sorry, we're going to use CSS style rules to change the order, the positioning, uh, and other display characteristics. And you'll see at the breakpoint of 768, all we're going to do is basically write some new style rules that will trigger when that breakpoint is reached. Uh, we're going to have we're going to build a one basic layout and then use style rules to target the various screen sizes and you'll see the screen size is going to be our which was going to consist of our breakpoints um, and then we're going to in the next slide here or the next video we're going to talk about how to choose our various breakpoints uh, and then what do we want to do once we have those breakpoints implemented so and then our next video we're going to talk about let's go in and actually begin to code out what is a breakpoint and then we're going to talk about the different um, components of what is and how do you implement a breakpoint into your site. Stay tuned.